Hi, good day, and welcome to my third video on vector ratios. Now, this topic is suited for persons doing CXC maths and also doing CXC ad maths. This is actually really an extension to my first vector video because I forgot to do this topic. So let's jump straight into it. Let's do a small revision on what ratios mean. I have four ratios on the board here. Ratios 2 to 3. Let's start off with the orange one. Ratios is just a fancy way or a different way of writing a fraction. When you see the ratio 2 to 3, you don't see a fraction because a fraction has a numerator and it also has a denominator. You will notice all the denominators are missing. So how do you get the denominator? It's really, really simple. All you need to do is add all the numbers in the ratio. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So this is really means 2 fifths and 3 fifths. Let's try the blue one. If you see the ratio 4 to 6, this is really a fraction. Well, to get the denominators, you just need to add the, the numbers in the ratio. So 4 plus 6 is 10. So this really means 4 tenths and 6 tenths. Let's try the black one. The ratio 1 to 3 to 9. Let's add up all the numbers. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 9 is 13. So this really means 1 to tenth, 3 to teens, and 9 to teens. Let's try one more, the red one. If you see the ratio 3 to 17, 3 plus 17 is 20. This really means 3 twentieths and 17 twentieths. All right, so that's a, that's a brief, brief uh, revision on ratios. But let's learn to apply this now to a situation. So let's say that you have a rope. So that's a rope there. And the rope is 18 meters long. And you want to divide this rope from in a ratio of, let's say, 2 to, mm, two to 3. So that means if we're dividing it between two people, one person is going to get some of the rope and the other person is going to get a part of the rope. But how much? Well, let's convert this to a fraction. 2 to 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. So this, so this really means 2 fifths and 3 fifths. So one person is going to get 2 fifths of the rope, while the other person is going to get 3 fifths of the rope. Simple. So how do you find 2 fifths of something? You just take the 2 fifths and multiply it by the total length, which happens to be 18. And to find 3 fifths, we just take 3 fifths and multiply it by the total length, which is 18 in this case. So this calculation would tell us how much this person got, and this calculation would tell us how much the other person got. So let's just take 2 fifths and multiply it by 18. 2 fifths multiplied by 18 will be 7.2. So one person will get 7.2 meters. And let's find 3 fifths of 18. So it's just 3 fifths multiplied by 18. And the other person will get 10.8 meters. Now it's really simple when we're dealing with something like a length. Let's have a slightly different situation. And this is what I was building up to. Instead of a rope, which is 18 meters, let's say one day somebody found a vector and the name of the vector was AB. It's going from A to B. And the value of this vector was 2A minus 16B. And let's say these two people wanted to split this vector into two pieces. They want to split it into a ratio. Let's say they split it into the ratio 3 to 5. So they want to split this whole thing in a ratio of 3 to 5. Let me just space it out a little bit here. 3 to 5. Well, it's the same concept. Let's convert this to a fraction first. 3 plus 5 is 8. That means this is denominator is 8 and the denominator is 8. Okay? That means one person is going to get 3 eighths of the vector 
a one person is going to get five eighths of the vector. That is all it means. So, how do you find three eighths of something? Remember, we want to find three eighths of the entire rope. We will take the three eighths and multiply by the length of the entire rope. So, we're going to take three eighths and multiply, but instead of a rope, we have a value of the vector. What's the value of the entire vector? 2a minus 16b. If I want to find 3 eighths of this entire vector, I have to make sure and put this in brackets. This symbolizes or hints that I need to multiply everything inside here by 3 eighths. So we're going to say 3 eighths multiply by 2 and then 3 eighths by minus 16b. So let's try that. I'm going to use my fractions button. 3 eighths multiply by 2a will give me 3 quarter a minus and 3 eighths multiply by 16. 3 eighths multiply by 16 will give me minus 6b. So one person will get this amount of the vector. And the other person, well, we just need to find 5 eighths of the vector. So we're going to take 5 eighths and multiply it by the entire value of the vector. So I'm going to use my fractions button again here. 5 eighths multiplied by 2 is 1 and a quarter a minus 5 eighths multiplied by 16. That will be 10b. So the other person, this is how much of the vector they would get. All right. So let me show you how it actually comes in the exam now. Let me try to use the terms and same words that they use in the exam. Let's draw another vector. All right. Let's check any time here quickly. All right. Okay. Let's say I have the vector. Let me erase this. There's no need to have that anymore. Let's say I have the vector P, Q. And the value of the entire vector is 10 common P minus 20 Q. Right. And let's say there's a point on this vector now let's say we have the point let's use the point m and i tell you that m divides the whole line in the ratio they say p to m to m to q that's what they will say is in the ratio two to let's use something other than two let's say it's three to one so that means from P to M, P to M, that's represented by the tree. And then from the M to the Q, M to the Q is represented by the 1. So let's find the vector PM and find the vector MQ. First of all, let's get the fractions going. 3 plus 1 is 4. So that means the denominator is 4. And over here, the denominator is also 4. So to find PM, that's from here to here, PM is equal to 3 quarter multiplied by the length of the entire vector. Sorry, the value of the entire vector. So we just need to take this and multiply it by 3 quarter. And don't worry, when we get this answer, I will show you what it means on the actual diagram. So... 3 quarter, I'm going to use my fractions button, multiply by 10, is 7 and a half P minus, right? 3 quarter, sorry, I mean, I'll just double check in something, make sure I made no mistakes. Correct so far. And now I'm going to find 3 quarter of 20, which will give me minus 15 Q. So PM is this value. So that means from here all the way to here, only up to M, right? That part is 7 and a half P minus 15 Q. But that is only from P to M. The whole vector is actually 10 P minus 10 Q. Let's find M Q now from M to Q. Let me use a different um, color for M to Q. I'll use the green. Right. M m to q how do you find mq mq is not the whole line mq the examiner is trying to tell you it's only quarter of the entire line 
So MQ would be a quarter multiplied by the entire length of the line. Let's use our fractions button. A quarter multiplied by 10 is 2 and a half P minus and a quarter of 20. Well, that's 5. So from here to here is 2 and a half P minus 5 Q. So if the examiner were to ask you now, what's the value of QM? Remember, from M to Q, this way is positive 2 and a half minus 5 Q. So if he tries to trick you now, and he says, hey, I want you to find the vector QM. MQ is this way, but QM is the opposite way. Remember in my first video in vectors, I told you, if you are going against the arrow, you notice you are opposing the arrow. All you need to do is make all the signs the opposite. So this positive becomes negative and this negative becomes positive. Similarly, if we have the value for PM on the board, that's the blue value. If they want you to find MP, all we have to do is make the signs the opposite. That's if they wanted us to find MP. All right. Now, I really hope that cleared up a lot there on how to use uh, ratios and vectors. Ratios with vectors, sorry. Right? So, in my next um, vectors video, I'm actually going to show you how to put everything into one question. I'm going to make you find the magnitude of a vector. I'm going to use ratios in the, in the same, same, same question. Right? So uh, look out for my next video, video four, and that video will be perfect for, for maths students as well as additional mathematics students. Take care, guys.